Now, our first guest tonight is a political analyst and an author, Gianno Caldwell. Gianno's new book is called Taken for Granted, How Conservatism Can Win Back the Americans That Liberalism Failed. Gianno, great to see you. We'll talk Thank about you. your book here a bit later, but let's start with this whole impeachment topic. Uh, here's a look at some of the House Democrats who have maybe wavered in their support of impeachment. This weekend, Michigan Congresswoman Brenda Lawrence said she can't see the value in removing President Trump from office, but I think someone from Pelosi's office may have got to her because she's right. walked that back a little bit. But still, you got Connor Lamb in Western Pennsylvania, Jeff Van Drew uh, in New Jersey there, and Colin Peterson in Minnesota. These are all swing districts. Van Drew, I think it's uh, President Trump's favorite Democrat label. He's quoted him as saying, quote, we've spent millions of dollars, in my opinion, tons of time, tons of hurt, fracturing the nation apart. I haven't seen this to be a good thing. And apparently a lot of America agrees with Jeff Van Drew. Uh, Gianna, are we experiencing a, a loss of steam here behind the impeachment push? Impeachment, impeachment, where are thought impeachment? Absolutely, <laughs> I would agree with that statement. Further. The American people have been polled and 52% of Americans feel that the Democrats have botched this impeachment inquiry. And certainly, I think the numbers that they were looking to change, especially with independents, have not really. You see a decrease be, uh, by way of a CNN poll that was just released that now less independents support impeachment and removal for office. Of course, those numbers have increased when it comes to Democrats, um, not really changed with Republicans. So. Democrats had a big job to do. One, you had to show something that was clear for the American people. We spent from prime time, from morning to prime time hours, hearing testimony after testimony with nothing conclusive. It was a lot of opinion, but no evidence of a quid pro quo, and certainly no evidence of something impeachable. This is problematic for the Democrats. It is messy. And it makes sense why so many um, of these swing Democrats are now kind of backing, backing away from yeah. impeachment. And it's not just the Democrats in Congress either. You talked about that CNN poll. This was also from the New York Times today. And this, I think, really underscores your point. Now, nearly two thirds of voters in six battleground states who voted for President Trump in 2016, but for Democratic congressional candidates in 2018, say they intend to back the president against each of his top rivals in 2020. This is a New York Times Siena College poll that was just re re released today. And Gianno, to me, this says that swing voters gave Dems a chance in the midterms, but the Democrats squandered that opportunity by focusing too much on impeachment. Yeah, I mean, you think about what happened in 2016. We had a president that came in office, immediately deregulated the economy, passed numerous pieces of legislation or via executive order, or to change our way of living in a very positive direction. Democrats get an opportunity to govern. And what have they done? Impeachment. It's all, been, it's all been about scandals. We haven't seen much legislation. So they've botched an opportunity to truly serve the American people and work with the president on something as simple as USMCA. That's something they could pick right. up as a win for, for America, not just for President Trump, but they haven't done it. So I think voters aren't going to forget this because Democrats are gonna keep this going all the way up in 2020, which was intended to keep a cloud over this president's head into the 2020 election. Yeah, you know, Democrats love to talk about all the bills they sent over to the Senate, but they seem to forget that elections have consequences and the Republicans won the Senate, Republicans won the White House, so they have to send bills over there that are actually gonna get signed by Republicans. Right. <laughs> right? right. All right, uh, let's have our panel join us now for more on this discussion. Let's welcome in Jesse Jane Duff. She's uh, the Veterans for Trump Advisory Board co-chair. She's a retired Marine gunnery sergeant. Also with us tonight, Robin Biro. He's a Democratic strategist, a former Obama campaign field director and a former Army Ranger as well. All right, Rob and Jesse, we just heard Gianno talk about that CNN poll. We talked about the New York Times Siena College poll. Again, here's the info on that CNN poll that, uh, you know, more Democrats now are opposed to the way, I'm sorry, more people are opposed now to the way Democrats have handled this whole situation. Uh, it's just barely 43% to, or 44% to 43%. Robin, what do you think about the uh, momentum behind the Democrats' impeachment push? Is it losing steam? John, I had a, a look at this poll and the metrics, uh, and what it showed was that there's really no change at all from October to November. It didn't move the needle 
it in the least the the impeachment hearings I'm saying. Uh, so what that shows is that really they it's sort of a wash. Uh, the information did get out there. I hope that it would. Uh, so the public does have this information. They can do with with it what they want. But it really hasn't convinced anybody uh, one way or the other. And I think kind of we're in a political uh, everyone's so entrenched with their with their politics now that I, I just don't see anything changing. Yeah, Jesse, you know, you, you would think Democrats would hope that after everything that they tried to do in the public impeachment hearings, that needle would be moved and it would be much more in favor of the way Democrats are handling the process so far. Uh, I guess you're not surprised, though, that uh, Adam Schiff failed to move that needle. I just want to thank Adam Schiff for giving Republicans so much airtime, primetime airtime. I mean, how much did the American public get to see these fabulous Republican congressmen cross-examine these supposed witnesses and nail them each time that they could not describe any type of quid pro quo, any type of bribe, anything else. And I love that the uh, Democrats thought that we would acquiesce to, to a man in uniform when Lieutenant Colonel Vindman shows up in his dress uniform to admonish the president. I call out the United States Army and say, is this going to be the new norm where disgruntled army officers or even Marine Corps officers or any other branch of service that doesn't see eye to eye with the president will go and testify? What is the standard we have here now? I mean, it really exposed what is going on in Washington, D.C., and it actually has been an opportunity. I hate to say Rahm Emanuel may have been right with the mindset of don't let, you know, anything go to waste here. Hmm. What, what was the exact words he don't let, never a, let a, uh, yeah, never a, let a crisis, crisis go to waste. Don't let right? a crisis. So, Ron Manuel, we stole your playbook. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Well, the House Judiciary Committee is set to take over the impeachment hearings next week. They scheduled their first public hearing for December 4th. This comes to the White House. The Intelligence Committee, I'm sorry, the House Intelligence Committee is about to submit its report of the evidence that they've gathered uh, during the first round of public testimonies. We'll get the panel's take on that in just a moment. But first, Newsmax White House correspondent John Gizzi tells us what we can expect next week. In all likelihood, the House of Representatives will impeach President Trump sometime between Thanksgiving and Christmas, and a trial will begin in January, just as Democrats are selecting their eventual nominee against Mr. Trump. Most Americans are not interested in these things or would prefer to impeach Donald Trump by going to the polls. But the trial will go ahead, and so impeached and be damned. The president says this, and so do Democrats in the House. For Newsmax TV in Washington, D.C., I'm John Gizzi. All right, so our thanks to John Gizzi there. Again, as we mentioned, House Judiciary Chairman Jerry Nadler has given President Trump and his lawyers until December 1st to decide if they will testify. President Trump seems to relish the idea of having some of his, his uh, inner circle testify. Lightning round to everybody here. Should President Trump or other top officials testify during the Senate impeachment trial or whatever comes next? We'll go yes or no questions. We'll start with Gianno, then go to Robin, and then go to Jesse. Gianno, go ahead. I would say yes, because there would be fairness at least in a Senate trial. Robin, what do you think? Oh, yeah, I think that he should testify if, just like I said with the Mueller thing, if he wants to exonerate himself and clear his name, go for it. Yeah, Jesse, we heard the president talk early on in the Mueller process saying that he would testify. Of course, we know he gave written responses. Do you think we'll see President Trump or anyone from his inner circle testify publicly? I expect the inner circle, not necessarily the president. And uh, let's get Adam Schiff on that hot seat. Adam Schiff, <laughs> maybe Hunter Biden. Here with us to discuss this, our political panel analyst and author, Gianno Caldwell, also joining us, Veterans for Trump Advisory Co-Chair, Women for Trump Advisory Board Member, Jesse Jane Duff, also a retired Marine Gunnery Sergeant and Democratic Strategist and former Obama Campaign Field Director, Robin Byro. All right, everyone, there are these reports now that White House officials are frustrated with Kushner's new position. We've heard some frustrations uh, from some border hawks as well about Jared Kushner taking over this role. Uh, Gianno, obviously the president has a lot of faith and trust in Kushner. Can he get 500 miles of new border wall built before the 2020 election? We got to keep in mind that Jared Kushner is a part of the, the president's inner circle as well as family. In addition to that, Jared has been a, a part of some of the most successful 
initiatives um, throughout President Trump's presidency. I think about the First Step Act, how he was key on that. I think about Opportunity Zones. He was also a part of that discussion. I think about a number of pieces of legislation that have been pushed and came about because of Jared Kushner. He's an individual who I personally view as someone who can get the job done. And I think that's in- exceptionally important, considering this is about one of the only pres- uh, promises the president made in the 2016 campaign that has not been fulfilled yet. And this is why he wants him to take on this role so we can get it done and get it done quickly. Yeah, Jesse Jane, at those rallies in 2016, we heard about building the wall, draining the swamp, and locking her up. Hillary Clinton's not in jail yet. The swamp is in the process of being drained. We can see that. The wall, though, still being built. How do you feel? What's your level of confidence? that Kushner can be the one to get this done. Well, not to echo what Gianno said, but it really is clear that uh, Jared has been a critical member of this team in the White House. Uh, he has direct access, obviously, to the president. He is in the closest uh, closest of circles with the president, being family also. I mean, look at the Jerusalem uh, being the embassy being moved into Jerusalem. That was also part of Jared's uh, Jared's direction and having that happen. The First Step Act was amazing. They had to push that through Congress like you wouldn't believe, because yeah, keep in absolutely. mind, they were fighting Democrats who did not want to give him any. They did not want to give this president one inch, but yet not they had fought the against House. this. Yeah. Yes. And they would have put it they would have put this square in the Democrats faces that they had turned against African-Americans. Jared has been also critical against changing the laws that we are working on against illegal immigration, trying to dissolve what we have now as the visa lottery program. Some of the other opportunities that people have where they are able to get into this country and have long term visas or green cards without becoming U.S. citizens. He's been a critical piece of a lot of this legislation that's going on or what the president has been pushing forward. So I think he knows what he's doing. A vote of confidence from Jesse and Gianna. Okay, we got to move on here. I want to ask Robin about uh, AOC, the New York Congresswoman, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, <laughs> says she never wants to hear the words free stuff again during a public housing town hall in the Bronx over the weekend. AOC told the crowd that she's tired of being accused of bribing voters with, quote, free stuff. Here she is. So first of all, this is not free stuff. Second of all, these are public goods. Yes. They're public goods. Yeah. I mean, I kind of agree with her in one way. I mean, these are public things, right? Public education is important. Libraries, infrastructure, this is important. This is stuff she's talking about. But, Robin, let's be honest. There's no such thing as a free lunch. Somebody's paying for this stuff. Uh, Yeah, you better believe it. Uh, And, you know, I get it. What she doesn't like is that the Republican talking points are being used against her in some of the Democratic uh, primaries right now. The 2020 candidates have been actually coming for her. Uh, So I get it. Uh, Those moderates really want to not have Medicare for all and some of these programs that are are free social programs. I get it. But she's not being entirely intellectually honest, John, because somebody's paying for it and it's the taxpayers. At least Elizabeth Warren is honest enough to say that. Uh, AOC, not so much. Yeah, we appreciate we appreciate the honesty every once in a while. I mean, that may work in the Bronx in her district, uh, but the rest of America knows uh, that somebody has to pick up the check for this stuff. All right, right. But Elizabeth Warren isn't honest enough to say that her plan is going to tax middle class uh, voters. So yeah. she's not honest about that. We'll, we'll get there in a second. Gianna, stand by real quick. I'm going to say goodbye real quickly to Jesse and Robin. They're going to come back with us a little later in the show. But right now, I want to focus a little more on Gianno in his new book. Let's talk about this. We, we talked about this a little bit before. Gianno, it's called Taking for Granted, How Can conservatism can win back the Americans that liberalism failed. In the book, you talk about lawmakers from both parties failing African-American voters. And you say there is another way, perhaps maybe like Elizabeth Warren being honest to middle class voters about the fact they may actually have to pay for some of the stuff she's promising them. Right. Right. And in my book, Taken for Granted, I talk about how I grew up. Uh, Grew up on the south side of Chicago, extremely poor, lights, gas and water off at the same time. Mom addicted to crack cocaine. Got involved in politics when I was 14 because my grandfather told me that was the way to provide the necessary help my mom needed. It was by way of elected officials. I saw immediately after getting involved in the Democratic Party um, that the Democrats in the city of Chicago and across this nation had taken 
their voters for granted. You talk about the mostly African Americans, uh, 90 plus percent that vote for Democrats, uh, but there's also another group of Americans who've been taken for granted, and those are the white voters in the Appalachian region, the ones that when Trump said he was going to bring their factory jobs back in factory jobs back in 2016, all the Democrats said that he was lying. Well, in 2018, he added over 500,000 new manufacturing jobs to the economy. So when I talk about in my book, Take It For Granted, I take people through a wide scope of how I became a conservative, why I became a conservative, and certainly holding each party accountable, whether that be President Trump, if he says or does something wrong and he's not being committed to his promises, or someone on the left, which oftentimes don't commit <laughs> to whatever they make promises of. So I'm super excited about this book. President Trump has endorsed it and culture Ben Shapiro, New Gingrich, Keiko James, the president of Heritage, and many others. Um, and I, I'm looking forward to people uh, uh, getting it and, and sharing their feedback on it. And everyone's loving it thus far. Well, we highly recommend the book. Congratulations on all your success, you so Gianno. Uh, we look forward to hearing from you. I know we're going to hear a lot from you in the future. Uh, have a wonderful Thanksgiving as well, Gianno. We'll talk to you Thank again you. real soon. Thank you as well. Thank you. All right.